Dan, from your perspective, this is something that you played or uh, played with as well in, in your career. Um, what's been your experience, your approach with uh, with Jira automations? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm a massive fan of automating in general. I think, um, first of all, not everything should or can be automated. That's okay to admit. But when you are doing a task regularly and more than once, you know, so, so as soon as you say, right, I've got to do this task twice a month, you know, twice a week, whatever that kind of cadence is. Um, and, you know, it's fairly easy to replicate within an automation rule, then you're immediately saving time, saving energy, saving product, you know, and we can give back some of that, um, you know, because no one also likes doing BAU work. Uh, that's one of the biggest complaints that we always get from every single member of staff is I don't want to do this. You know, can the automation rules just handle it and get on with it? Um, so I'm a big, big advocate for it. Uh, I've spent a lot of time working with teams. That's where I get a lot of passion is about trying to understand the fundamentals of how each team wants to work and needs to work to achieve their goal and about then trying to like find those little productivity gains. Um, and they often come from automation. So if you're working with software development teams, it could be that um, every time a pull request is made and needs to be approved, it when it comes into Jira, it goes back out to Slack and the approval is done in Slack. It could be that when an incident is made, it automatically spins a Slack channel and makes a Zoom thing. You know, like there's so many different aspects that we can immediately kick off from an automation role. And we don't rely on, again, human error to come into play because as soon as an action, the parameters have been met, the rule is going to go ahead and go and do that for us, which is brilliant. Um, so that, oh, sorry. No, go on, go on. That's one of the things that I was going to mention there, Dan, too, was you, you brought up the point with human error. It's not just about saving me from the remedial task as an admin, right? No. But it's also saving the organization from my mistakes, meaning when you look at any piece of software, whether it's on the GitHub side, whether it's on your CICD, even YAML files, people don't always do the best job of effectively managing that. Even Salesforce, right? There's always that thing, you know, folks don't update their Salesforce. It happens all the time. Automations is a way to completely foolproof your organization from bad if interoperability, help, bad hygiene. Absolutely. If, as long as we continuously, you know, as long as we maintain those automations for a start, as long as the data that we provide the automation is relevant and it's not stale, so it's actually active data, then the automation rule has a much higher chance of success. The moment you start to drop those things is when automation will always fail. Because if you don't give it good information, it, it you can't expect it to give you good information back. That's just not how it works. It's not a mind reader. It is what are the parameters I need to run and I will go ahead and do that for you. Um, obviously, we're walking more into the world of AI and intelligence for Atlassian and things like Rovo with the new app, um, application announced at Team24 this year. There will be certain levels of aspects where we can now actually offload entire tasks and just tell an agent bot to go ahead and do that. We obviously aren't there yet. Um, and, you know, in terms of automation for Jira, we'll keep it non-app specific and we'll just go with the native automation rules. There, we've We've done... Everything, you know, like I said, from software developments, sending Slack channel messages to actually running and creating our own self-serve portal entirely on JSM. And we've now reduced the number of, you know, uh, tickets into the agents by 60% because it's all handled by the agent. It's all handled by the self-serve. You want to be added to a group? Great. You want to get product access? Cool. Fill in this form. And it's all things now. And then you go into Jira. If you want your project created or archived, if you need new conference space, if you want temporary admin requests, all of these things are now handled by the automation rules using APIs and everything else. We don't touch it apart from approvals. That's that's the level that we play at. That um, I played around with it myself, Dan, um, the Atlassian intelligence side. And I was already pretty impressed with some of the sample automations that it could provide based on my very dumb natural language that I was using that could still put the pieces together around, you know, closing tickets or opening them up where there's a comment. These things were, it's based on the on the templates provided, but it's still impressive to see it uh, done via via natural language. And that's only going to advance. But I, I also see automations a little bit the same way I see product development, which is sometimes people over automate as well. Um, Absolutely. Or, Absolutely. Or, or organizations 
you know, folks come in, new processes come in, and there's a layer of automations that come in. And then it happens again. It, yes, absolutely. Um, first of all, just like anything, it is part of your ecosystem. You have to health check it. You have to maintain that thing. You also have to make sure that you're not seeing duplicate rules. And if you are, you could do some of the consolidation. We saw from the announcements um, early, late, uh, early last, sorry, late last year into this year around the automation limit runs. And that's how it's been affected. It, obviously, there were some talks at Team24 that I was part of with Rodney Neese and the Jira guy. And we spoke exactly on that topic about it. Not just because you have an opportunity, you still have to ask the most important question, which is what's the why? The five whys. Why do you want to do this? Why do you want to do it? And if you ask it five times, you eventually find the underlying cause. And at that moment, you can make one of two decisions, which is great. That is a really good use case for an automation rule. And it works because it's not going to cost as much to create or maintain, and you're going to get benefit from it. Or you can go, right, we can still achieve your t what you need. We don't have to do it. We just have to make a process change somewhere else. And actually, we are now catching and stopping over automations, automations being created when they're not required to. And we can always make sure that best practice is being followed. So the most important thing whenever you're coming to create a new automation rule is why do you want to do it? 100%. And that applies like that angle on product development. Do you want this feature? Or do you have a problem that you're trying to solve? And this is the feature Absolutely. that you think will solve that problem. Um, I think, Dan, we can have an entire hour conversation on best practices with automations. But Absolutely. one of the things that, that I noticed too, though, is even with very disciplined organizations and admins who, who really understand exactly when to actually make these automation rules, you're still dealing with thousands of them sometimes in these massive organizations, Yeah. right? And these are a lot of dependencies, a lot of conditions, a lot of different triggers, a lot of different actors, and things can get very complex. And as we know, they could be deleted. From yeah. your perspective, Dan, what are some of the consequences at a high level that you can think of that happen if I delete one single automation or maybe several by by accident? So we have run into issues where uh, less experienced individuals who've maybe had temporary admin access uh, at the time have ended up deleting automation rules for other teams. And it, you know, for the first hour, maybe day, they don't really recognize it. They think, oh, that was weird. I didn't see that notification or that ticket didn't move or whatever that the use case might be. And then all of a sudden things start piling up. You've got misinformation out, you know, and then you're starting to make choices, data-driven choices on wrong data. And that, that plays a massive issue. So it's very important to make sure that there's a process around deletion and, and things like that. And again, because of the way the native automation systems work is that there's no backup for it. If you want to do it, you manually have to back up the rules. Now you can mass backup by just exporting every rule, or you have to go into each individual rule and take them out. Now, because of that incident, which was in fairness, that was a previous company, but um, what we actually do now is anytime we are input unless they are templated rules anytime we're implementing a very very business critical rule immediately is taken that the first thing that we do is take it back up uh so once once it's ready is production ready turn it on take an export that just then gets kept on a shared drive somewhere and you know we'll, we'll change the name so we know which rule it is um we don't want to run into that and obviously then anytime you do major version changes then you'll you'll update the the export but it it's almost silly the fact that we rely on it so heavily and yet don't do anything in order to ensure its longevity well it's there out of sight out of mind it just works right that's the beauty of products that are amazing but when it's cloud you have to think about these things but dan one of the things i noticed too it's there's different types of consequences there's the ones that creep up on you when certain automations are, are deleted. And that's when we've talked about how potentially you have admins, then leaders, then executives making decisions based on the wrong data, right? And maybe adding the wrong projections. But then you also can even see an impact on resolution times, right? If the automation, somebody has to go and rebuild it um, and maybe things aren't happening, tickets aren't getting addressed. So there's so many different webs 
And the more custom automations you're using, the more custom problems that you can cause. Uh, the simple way to address this is what Dan's mentioned, which is actually creating a backup of that. Mm -hmm.